Hi, everyone. Um, I would like to start by thanking the Next Einstein Forum for its invitation, uh, its support, and fellowship. Um, before addressing this question that you see in this title, um, it must be starting somehow, some way, from the beginning, which is the universe. Many of you recognize this picture of the universe from its very beginning that we call the Big Bang, and then the formation of stars, and then galaxies. It is known that today, this universe is expanding. And you have already a lot of questions about the origin of our universe, that we call Big Bang, as I said. Um, but this is not directly the question that I would like to address today. I would like to address the collection of all points that you see in here, which is mainly a place and a moment in the universe, and we call it space-time. And space-time, and understanding the structure of space-time, remains, in my opinion, one of the toughest challenges for humanity in terms of knowledge. For addressing that question, you must be going in a framework called physics. And let's try to see how physics is reviewed, you know, how can physics can be understood. And it turns out that physics can be understood through distance scales, through length scales. From the very big one, like the size of our universe, to astronomical distances, you have then planetary distances, you come to our distance, which is the human distance, okay? So it's about, about, about a meter. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you have much smaller distance, like, you know, a micrometer. And this is, of course, the domain of biology. And then you have much smaller distance and you reach what we call the atom. This is more or less uh, the realm of chemistry. Then inside the atomic nucleus, you have what we call uh, proton and neutron. Evolves are made with what we call elementary particles. I invite you to the talk of Amanda. She will explain you this very beautifully, but more better, more better than I do. But we know when I say we understand physics along scales like this, I mean we understand the motion of bodies, their interaction, um, also the notion of energy and many of things that you see around you. And actually, uh, we can try to understand also space-time, that collection of points in the universe, as I said, uh, through length scales. And indeed, oops, I have going too far, too far, you, there we go. So, um, the classical description of space-time is, uh, has been provided by Einstein a very long time ago, and it's called the theory of Einstein relativity. It describes the geometry of your space-time in terms of the matter inside of it. So, all of this is very well known, and what is quite surprising is the fact that Einstein theory is valid through a large number of scales, from the galactical scales up to the theory of elementary particle, it turns out that the Einstein theory is extremely robust. Uh, you heard also the recent detection of gravitational waves in a very high technology uh, experiment that we call the LIGO experiment, and these people are kind of unbelievable because they achieved an extremely small you know, precision. So, um, so we understand quite space-time through scales. But um, for me, the question, what is space-time? lies a little bit beyond that framework where we understand it. Indeed, if you want to understand an object, if you want to define an object, you must understand the domain of validity of your understanding of it. So today, I would like to invite you in a regime in physics where the law of Einstein might be failing. And we call that, that uh, physics, oops, yeah, uh, the Planck length physics, or the physics which happen at the Planck length. And the Planck length is that amount, it's really extremely so small, 10 to the power of minus 35 meters, that's extremely small. And physicists believe that at that scale, well, physics will be radically different. But why physics would be different? Simply because the notion of space-time, as we know it today, will be radically different as well. And, in fact, uh, I will show you in the next slide, but for the moment, uh, that part that I call Planck land physics, you know, over there, it cannot be joined, cannot be understood through 
all the tools that we know so far in physics. And trying to unify this picture, the Planck line physics and the rest of physics that we, we, we know today, we quite know, well, remains one of the toughest challenges for physicists. Well, let's try to see how, what can be space-time at the Planck length. There, are all, uh, there is quite a large consensus among physicists claiming that, well, the space-time geometry will be highly irregular. None of the things that we know so far. Um, and there is no possible experiment that we can perform at that scale today. It requires a huge amount of energy, a colossal amount of energy uh, that we cannot achieve for maybe hundreds of years. So how can we understand the structure of space-time at that scale? So mainly, well, like Einstein did 100 years ago, well, he didn't wait for LIGO experiments, he thought about it, well, let's try to, to do the same. Well, uh, let's have the following proposal. The idea is quite simple. You want to propose model, which is going to produce for you some quantum version of space-time, some discrete model of space-time, and then you would like to see this model evolving along scales, which, and this model should remain mathematically and physically consistent along all scales. That's something that you wish, but it turns out that there are a lot of framework um, which can address this question, and in fact, quantum model of space-time actually are countless. We must be narrowing our research, choosing a particular framework, and I will use a particular setting here. Let me be a little bit more precise. I will use two assumptions. I would like to create quantum model of space-time using approximations. I will use building blocks for building my quantum space. That's the first assumption. Second uh, thing that I will do, I will assign a probability to each of those possibilities. And then, well, I would like to see emerging out of this a notion of space-time. What is the most likely object that you're going to have? Well, so uh, the first success in that framework can be traced back from the 80s. And it runs like this. You consider a triangle and you look at it as an atom of your space. You're going to glue those triangles together to form a quantum space. Now, you have a procedure. Maybe, for instance, you can divide those triangles into smaller triangles and keep up doing this process until you reach what we call in mathematics a limit. And then, for instance, here, you can reach a 2D continuous space and you have kind of win. Okay, explain like this is really simple, but of course, it's remained extremely complicated. So, here, of course, we are not in a 2D space, we are living in a four-dimensional space-time, which means three dimensions of space, one dimension of time. All of these must be extended in higher dimension. And this now becomes an extremely huge challenge. So here, there we go, we, you start by a tetrahedron that you're gonna glue to form a 3D quantum space in that particular approach. And now you divide, you keep on dividing those triangles, uh, those tetrahedra, to smaller piece until you reach again, you know, a 3D continuum space. This is just an example. It's really not what we should expect usually. So, precisely, my research would like to see this transition from the discretum to the continuum as a theory of elementary particle. I would like to see this evolution like the evolution of, of, of elementary particle physics. And actually, we have found an interesting class of model which realizes okay, um, which, has, uh, which survives along scales, and we call it in my planet of theoretical physicists, class of renormalizable models, okay? So you, we see the evolution of this model, is, uh, of this model are really be well behaved, even though the limit we have not yet reached, uh, this is still to be understood. Let me just give you a summary. We would like to see, you know, the Planck land physics over there, pretty much like a field theory of elementary particles. In that way, we're going to provide a unified picture for physics. But remember, um, this is just a theory. Okay? I thank you for your attention.